Hello, Boundless Universe. This is James, or well, Sulfur Blade, and I'm back with another episode. So today we're going to be talking about cubits. What are cubits? Cubits is this currency right here. 1,830 cubits is what I currently have. Why did cubits come into existence in the first place? I keep seeing um, uh, uninformed people talking about cubits, how horrible they are, how it's pay to win, blah, blah, and more blah. So, here's some background about cubits and why they exist and what's the reason that they exist. Back in beta, before we had cubits, whenever we leveled, we got X number of plots. And that worked fine. People were relatively happy, but people are never always happy. You see, there was a large portion of the player base who enjoyed to play this game in ways that revolved around things other than building. Strange. Why would somebody want to do something other than building in a voxel game? I know. Very bizarre concept. But this is an MMORPG, and there are indeed things to do in the game that are not building. There's shopping and crafting and, and hunting and mining and gathering and plenty of other things that don't involve building. So, the same message kept coming up over and over and over in the forum that, hey, why do builders get all these plots whenever we level and us non-builders who could care less about plots, why don't we get something cool? We don't want all these plots. We, we, want, we want to be able to do something else with our levels other than just get plots. And so this sparked the creation of the cubit. The cubit was a way in which we could give a value to stuff that were like plots. So now plots have a cubit value. And now when you level, you get cubits instead of plots. And this was to make that portion of the player base happy that didn't want plots, that weren't builders. So now they could get their their cubits and they could do other things with their reward from leveling besides just get plots to build on. That is the invention of how the cubit came to be. Now people see cubits inside of the game and they start thinking microtransactions. They start thinking cash shop. They start thinking loot boxes. Blah blah and more blah and, and the next thing you know we have this big long-winded pay-to-win discussion. Which is really a moot discussion. Uh, Boundless isn't even remotely pay-to-win. And so now let's let's move into that discussion shall we. I'm going to open up the exchange, which is really a poor term for for what it is. So inside of the exchange, you have outfits, outfits, and guess what? They're bought with this mysterious currency called cubits. Cubits that you earn for leveling inside of the game. Now, people who didn't want plots have other thing to spend their cubits on, like, look at this, cosmetic stuff. Yay! 
And in the extras, we can spend cubits on things like skill reset tokens, which means you can completely reset your character's skills. Now I'm scrolling down here, I have three skill reset tokens. And no, I did not spend my cubits on those. You see, every character starts with three skill reset tokens for free, automatically, without spending any money on them. No cubits spent, you start off with three skill reset tokens. So, I can do a lot of skill resetting. I can reset my character three times before I ever have to go to the exchange. And spend my in-game cubits, mind you, to get a skill reset token. I could also spend 300 cubits to get 10 skill cleanse points. Same thing, if you remember looking back at, uh, at my skills, I have 49 cleanse points. I used to have more. I've actually been using these here and there. Not many, though. I'm careful with how I use my cleanse reset points. But you get a bunch for free, without having to buy them in the exchange. Um, you can get additional characters for 600 cubits. Let's, let's think about how much 600 cubits is. If I level twice, I will make 600 cubits. So, by leveling up twice, I can have an additional character slot. That's pretty cheap. Alright, before I was interrupted by the cuddle trunk. Um, skill sets. So people see skill sets, and they think pay to win. And indeed, when I first saw skill sets brought up as a concept in beta, I was very quick to jump in the forum and start screaming pay to win. Because, oh my god this was game-breaking. Or at least I thought it was at the time. See, skill sets don't work like skill sets work in all other games that have skill sets. Boundless skill sets work completely differently. So in other games, when you have skill sets, you could press a button and all of your skills magically transform into a new set. That's not how Boundless works. In Boundless, if you get a skill set, well, you have a completely new set in which you have to earn skill points to put into it. So at level 50, you get 100 skill points. I'm level 53, so I'm, I'm three levels past 50, I think. Yeah, so I have additional skill points beyond 100. So I could use these six skill points to start putting into a brand new skill set. So I would have 100 skill points in this skill set, and I would have six skill points in the next skill set. So really, in order to have two skill sets with 100 points in it, you would have to level to level 100, so that you could gather enough skill points to fully fill up that other skill set. That's difficult, because when you reach level for, well, when you get into the latter levels, it takes a lot of XP to level. Not as much as it does early levels. Early levels, it's far easier to level. The leveling system is on a, on a curve, as most games are. So, obviously, skill sets are not pay to win. Skill sets are just, well, they are what they are. Another skill set in which you can switch over to, uh, if you have the skill points, to properly put into that skill set to make it worth switching over to. So yeah, nothing like what most what skill sets are in most games where you can just take your normal skill point pool and magically transform it into something new. That's not how it works in Boundless. So, skill sets. Not even remotely pay to win. Appearance change token. I think everybody is pretty uh, 
pretty much in agreement that cosmetic stuff is not pay to win. And appearance change token is about as cosmetic as it gets. Tint kit, 200 cubits. Again, completely cosmetic. Gleam Club. Color chat. That's cosmetic. Emojis laughing. Again, cosmetic. Advanced tinting. Again, cosmetic. Gleam Glyph. That's this thing here. Again, cosmetic. Beacon Auto Fuel. Now, this is just a minor in game convenience. My beacon is automatically filled as long as I'm in the Gleam Club. To fill a beacon to uh, four weeks requires 10 leaves off of a tree. So this is basically going to save me from having to knock 10 leaves off of a tree to make basic beacon fuel about three times. It's, it's really... I'm not really winning anything here, guys. This is a very minor convenience. So that's everything in the extras. That's everything in the Gleam Club. So far, we have found nothing that's pay to win. Now, where the, the line seems to be drawn in the sand for people is you can buy cubits with real money. Wow, okay, so I can spend real money so that I can get cosmetics, so that I can get more skill cleanse points, so that I can get another skill reset token that I still have to level in order to get the skill points to put into it, or so I can get an, another additional character slot, which I could get that very easily by just playing the game. So basically what this boils down to is that the the spending of cubits uh, with real life money really is ever honestly used for any reason only okay is really only ever used for one logical reason and that's to purchase more plots so if you don't feel like you have enough area or land with the plots that you have now I would like to show you the plots that I have So I'm looking at Beacon View. This is my shop here, right? It's a very large shop. Quite spacious. It's a 7x7 seven seven plot footprint with plot multiple plots going up and down. Then I have that over there, which again, a lot more plots. It's a big Big tower, right? Yeah. A lot of plots went into this as well. In fact, if I look at my, my whatchamacallit, my inventory, you can see I have 391 total land plots. Guess what, guys? I haven't spent any money on plots. None. And I have all this land. I'm the Viceroy of a planet. I am currently winning. But I didn't pay to do so. So, this, uh, this quote-unquote, uh, being able to buy cubits, which really doesn't get you anything you can't, you can, you know, you already earn ample cubits in the game. Uh, that you could get anything you need in the game. But if you wanted to go ahead and use your real life money to get more uh, cubits so that you could obviously buy more plots so that you could plot a much larger area of land, uh, you can do so. Doesn't mean th that you're gonna win. Um, in fact, in the town of uh, that I'm in here, let's go ahead and look at the beacon. Uh, there's there's obviously someone that lives in town that has spent real life. that has spent real life money and if we go to here we will see that Merlin 
this guy here, he has 1,541 plots. And while, yeah, he, I believe he is a founder and he does get extra percentage tacked on so that his plots go farther because he had a founder package, yada yada. Um, he, 1,541 is a lot of plots. He's spent some real life money. There's no doubt about it in order to get that many plots. But as you can see, my 285 plots for free is kicking his butt in prestige. And that's because prestige is not how many plots you have. Prestige is just the land that you're reserving. So unless you build on that land to make it prestigious, it's it's not prestigious. So you can buy all the land in the world, it's not going to make you a winner in the game. And ultimately, that's everything there is to the pay to win discussion. There are no amazing microtransactions in Boundless. You cannot buy loot boxes. So that's the other thing. I have another video on debunking loot boxes. People saw people saw um, the rewards that you get in the game, not from anything that you purchase, but in the game if you do if you do You go to your journal, you go to objectives, you do an objective. Like if I was to pin this objective that says acquire locks, three locks. In fact, I'll, I'll attempt to do that objective real fast. Um, three locks. That, surely that can't be hard to do. I don't think I'm at the right machine. Locks, locks, locks. Here we are, locks. What do I need for that? Um, six cogs. 48, uh, oh, 14 minutes. Yeah, that's going to take too long. All right, well, anyway, if I accomplish that objective that I pinned, acquire three locks, it would show as having, oh, I have a botanical challenge. Already pinned. Let's go find two twisted aloba. That can't be hard. Okay, so I'm going to run down here. I'm going to hop into maybe Cata 3. Shut off beacon view so we don't have to look at that. I'm gonna run a little way in this direction. And so I'm looking for some twisted loba. Hopefully this planet has twisted loba. Most tier two and above, I think, have twisted loba. I'm going to accomplish this Twisted Aloba real quick so that you guys can see what the quote-unquote silly loot boxes people think our loot boxes actually are. They're in-game rewards is what they are. And it's laughable that people think these are loot boxes. Alright, 
so here I am in Petula. I'm gonna just hop through Javita's portal here. Okay, these Twisted Aloba I know are Javita's personal Twisted Alobas that he placed there, so I can't hit them as much as I want to. Uh, even though I think he'd understand for video purposes, being a, a guy who makes great content for the community, uh, I know better than that. They're not mine to kill. Okay, so I need to get outside of Javita's land and see if we can't run into a few Twisted Aloba real fast. There's one over there. All right, so one down, one more to go. not sulfur. This is my crafter. I do most of my videos on my hunter. So, uh, that, that is in somebody's property. Is it my property? Yeah, it's the Temple of Gaia. So, I actually own this. Owned by Sulf, as you can see. There. I've accomplished the botanical challenge. Fancy thing pops up on the screen. Now, when I look at the exchange, it shows one next to it, which means I got a reward for accomplishing that particular objective. I open it up, there's a stone objective coffer that says botanically challenged tier one gathering feat. So when I collect this, I'm gonna get a whole 500 XP and 50 coins. I did not buy this. This was awarded to me for actually doing something in game. So these quote unquote loot boxes that people have seen while watching videos and have jumped to radical conclusions, they are not freaking loot boxes at all. They're they're nothing of the sort. So now we have debunked the whole loot box myth. We've debunked that there's anything inside of here other than basically cosmetics. Nothing that gives you any type of radical advantage inside of the game. And the only thing that there really is to spend money on legitimately is plots. And plots don't allow you to win unless you actually build stuff on them. And in order to build stuff on them, you have to actually physically play the game and collect the resources. So there is no pay to win, folks. It's a it's a myth. Pay to win in Boundless is just that, a myth. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like. Um, and as always, Boundless community, you're awesome. And if you're in the fence about getting Boundless, I recommend that you do so. You will not regret it. Anyway, uh, have a great day and peace.